So I've got Studio open, and the first thing I'm going to do is create my word cloud. So I've installed a little plugin, and it adds a button up here in the ribbon, in the home view of the projects view. And it also adds an extra tab down here, so you can see these are all different tabs, which has got different bits of information in them. So all I need to do is click on either create word cloud here, or click it up there. I'll click it down here. And this will go through, and I guess, depending on the size of your project, that will determine how long this will take and how big the XML file is going to be. This is a fairly fairly small, small project, not, not too many words. So here's my word cloud. And you can see when I click on the words, it tells me the statistics for the individual words, so how many are in each one, which is quite interesting. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Open Project Folder. And this will take me to the location of the project file and also where the Word Cloud XML file is, which is here. If I double click that, it opens up the XML file in something that allows you to see it. And there you get to see your file, exactly as I showed it in the, in the article. So what I'm going to do is just make a copy of that path. And then I'm going to go to File, Options. And we'll go through the process of creating the file type. So I go to my file types, I click on new, and I'll just say XML. You can choose either of these two. It doesn't make any difference at this stage, but I'm gonna take the embedded, simple embedded content. I'm gonna call it Word Cloud, and I'll change the file type identifier as well to Word Cloud. It is an XML file, and I'll say next. I can then define the settings based on an XML file, that's one of the choices here. So I can browse to that file, pick the XML file and open it, and then click on next. And that will import all of the rules that are in there. Now I don't actually want these rules, so I'm gonna remove them. And you may be asking, why did I bother import it? And the reason I did is because it also brings in the root element, it just saves me adding it later, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and that completes the creation of the file, of the file type, sorry. So now we have the file type. I then go back to my parser rules, and now I'm going to add the rules back in again. Now, if I'd let, if, what I could do is I could, I could select them from here. So element, and this gives me a list of the available um, of the available elements. But because I want an XPath rule, I'm going to select XPath and just type it in. So this is going to be forward slash forward slash word it's for the word element. Oops. Then I need to add this part at count. It's greater than, we'll go greater than three this time instead of five, just so you can see this is where you would change it. Then forward slash at text. And we make that always translatable. And we say, okay. I then added my other one, which I just do by force of habit. You don't have to do this one, but this I just, like to add in more complicated files, it sort of gives you some guarantee that nothing else is going to be brought in. So I'm saying don't translate anything. And I just move that down to the bottom. So the bottom one says don't translate anything. And the top one says make the text attribute translatable for any word elements where the count value is greater than three which I explained in the article. So hopefully that's clear, but that's it. That's my file type done. So what I'm going to do now is I can go to my welcome view, translate single document. If I go back to where that file was, which is here, there's my XML file and I open it and we'll go from English United Kingdom to let's say um, German. I say, okay. And there we go, this has opened up that XML file and you can see I have every word there, which is greater than three. So heterogeneous was the last word. Just to double check that, whoops, that's not the right place. If I go back to there and I open that file up, let's just scroll down to heterogeneous. Heterogeneous has got four, so that'd be correct. I've only taken everything that's greater than three. So all the ones that are three and below, all that lot has been completely ignored. You can make this whatever you like, but that's just the way I set, the way I set it up for this little, little exercise. So I'm gonna close that now. 
Let me get rid of that. And I'm going to translate this file. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go to my project settings and just add the STL language cloud. It's possibly quite interesting for you to see how this is done if you haven't used the language cloud yet. I'm not going to use any of these special engines I happen to have set up. I'm just going to finish. So that's ready to go. And I'll just go to my batch process. In fact, I'll change it when I do the batch processing. So I say OK. And then what I'm going to do is click on batch tasks. That's me to save the file because it's a single file project. I'm going to pre-translate. Oh, oh, this is my little, excuse me, this is um, my little Qualitivity app. I should have turned that up before I started. So this is now recording everything that I'm doing. Um, I forgot about that. So pre-translate files. Next, I'm going to apply automated translation when no match is found. I'm finished. And that will go through and pre-translate the files for me. It's pretty quick because it's only a small file. I close it, reopen the file. And now I have a file that's all translated. So that's pretty good. So it might not be perfect, but that's what I'm going to use just for this demonstration. So I'm just going to close that now. Okay. Oh, have I saved it? Just let me have that up again quickly. Oh, I did. It's already there. Okay. <laughs> Apologies for that project activity that keeps chopping up. I'm going to tell you more about that application in the future. Very nice tool. Okay, so now that I've done that, I've got my um, my STLX live. The place I'll find that is if I go back to opening the project folder, here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'll keep that open now and I go to my welcome view. And the next stage is to turn that STLX live into a TMX file. So here in my welcome view, I've installed the STLX live to TMX application. If I bring up this again, I just take the STLX live and drop it into here and my target TMX we put in the same place um, as that file actually which was in there and we'll just call that my um, project TMX dot TMX and save it I could remove any tags or anything like that that are in the file. These are just words, there's nothing complicated in there at all. Um, and I'm gonna include everything, so I don't need to check anything. Even though they were draft, it's gonna convert the draft, the draft as well. So I click on run. That's finished. So it's converted that to a TMX, I hope. So if I look in here now, there's my TMX file. I double click that, you can see it. There's my TMX, which has got all my um, different segments. Company, Unternehmen, Construction, Bow. I don't know how good any of this is, but um, there it is anyway. And now I've got my project TMX. The next thing I need to do is open up the glossary converter, which I can run from the from here. I have the little project glossaries app installed. So here it is. I go to my settings, and I want to convert convert a TMX. I don't think I need to change any of that actually. So I can just go straight to um, to here, take my TMX, drop it into there. It's picked up the languages, English, United Kingdom, German, Germany. If I wanted to, I could change the language and I could make this straightforward English. So I don't have to worry about language variations. I make this one straightforward German, wherever it is. German, okay. And then just click on okay. That's going to run through. You can see it's already added it over there. I can see the project tmx.stltb. I can exit that. And if I double click on that, there's my turn base. Pretty cool. <laughs> Very cool. I really like this. So I hope that will be useful. You can see that it's really quite straightforward. I've just done it on the fly as I'm going along. And I guess once you've already got the file type set up, this is going to be a piece of cake all the time. Well, and I've just noticed something else actually. This is, um, oh, you're getting a quick preview there. That's multi-term 2000 um, 2015. It's just fired up by default. So, I hope that was useful. Um, and hope you'll be able to 
take advantage of the Word Cloud, the SGLX TMX and the Glossary Converter. All lots of applications that just demonstrate how much value you can get from the tools that people create and put on the Open Exchange and the things you can do with the resources you've already got.